If you're not in WWE, there's nowhere to go. Your career is over. You might as well start thinking about something else in life. And that's where I was. And then Lucha Underground came around and gave me a second opportunity. And then all of a sudden, the Indies exploded. And now we have AEW. So things changed really quickly. <laughs> to be going into TNT, everything like that, with just this new kind of lease on life in regards to your wrestling career and seeing how that goes for you? I mean, it's, it's really exciting. I feel like the the opportunity that they're they're providing us is something that, you know, you didn't, I couldn't imagine that happening a couple of years ago. And I started doing this character three years ago um, based off of something they kind of gave me at Lucha Underground. I tried to run with it myself and I wasn't getting a lot of traction with it. And I had all these ideas and I wanted to try this completely different style, which I feel like I don't even wrestle out there. I feel like I'm like, there's a performance that I'm doing with Luchasaurus that needed a platform and they've finally given it to me. And I just, myself and Jungle Boy, we have so many ideas together. And the fact that we're gonna have a TV audience to do that is, it's pretty incredible. And we're really excited about it. We definitely feel very fortunate about it too. I've got to ask about the elephant in the room to the dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. Um, about, you know, you guys were going to do the Wednesday night TV and all of a sudden NXT is going to USA Network head yeah. to head. So there is like a new war and, you know, a lot of fans lived through the Monday Night Wars in the 90s. How do you guys react? To that? How do you guys feel about that? There's going to be a sort of competing show at the same time. Well, I mean, I'm excited about it, really. I like the idea of competing. I feel like what I'm doing personally and what some of my people I work with are doing is better than anything else. So I say, you know, bring on competition, number one. But I think, two all the wrestlers, the workers, the talent, everyone benefits from competition. And there hasn't been competition since the 90s. And what was, everyone goes back to the 90s like it was the golden period in wrestling and they thought how great it was. And I remember watching as a kid back then, uh, even though I'm 65 million years old. Um, I'll say I was a kid then. Uh, but it was great to watch. It was, everyone was pushing each other. It was more competitive than ever. And then over the last 20 years, it's been an ice age. Um, it's like an asteroid hit the freak. <laughs> Stop the dinosaur puns. But uh, it's just, it hasn't been fun to watch. And there's only been a few guys that I've been interested in the last 20 years and really watching and following their careers. And I personally, I was in NXT when it first started. And I really didn't like, I was not happy there. And I'm glad I never would have been able to do this or create this there. So I think it's a different product. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with two hours of live TV against us. I'm going to watch everything because I'm a student of the game. I try to watch everything I'm doing and everything everyone around me is doing and see. So I'm curious to see how it goes just like you guys are. But I feel like myself, Jungle Boy, Marco Stone, what we're going to do as a team is ready to compete against anything they put out there. And you mentioned about how you know you were in NXT. And yeah. A lot of people talk about fans wanting an alternative. But for you know Marco and Jungle Boy both talked about how they might not be good fits in WWE. Is this important for the wrestlers to have this alternative, to have somewhere where they can go and be creatively involved in what they do? Well, I think that's exactly what it is. And I, for me, this is like a historic opportunity to make a change and to allow wrestlers in the future to feel like they have a place to go. When I left NXT when I was, when I was injured, and when I went back to Los Angeles to rehab, and I knew I wasn't going to go back. I knew that as soon as my injuries re recovered, they were going to let me go. This is how it went. It really felt like there was nowhere to go. And I remember talking to some people in the Indies and saying, well, you know, you can try to do the Indies, but there really isn't much money out there. There's not a lot of career opportunities. And it just seemed like if you're not in WWE, and this is 2012, if you're not in WWE, there's nowhere to go. Your career is over. You might as well start thinking about something else in life. And that's where I was. And then Lucha Underground came around and gave me a second opportunity. And then all of a sudden, the Indies exploded. And now we have AEW. So things changed really quickly. But it's important to me to be a part of this change so that people don't have to feel like that. There was a lot of people I remember staying in the situation where maybe they weren't doing the character they wanted to do or projecting the person they wanted to be out to the audience, but they, they felt like they had to stay there. There was no other opportunities. There was nothing else out there for them. So at least now with AEW, my goal is to show people that you really can be anything you want to be and that if you believe in something, someone out there will believe in you if you, what you're doing is actually good. So you're super well spoken for a dinosaur. Yeah, no, um, well, yeah, I have a master's degree. But it's really well yeah. done. I'm curious how you want to bring that, like how uh, as a character and as a persona, yeah. as a wrestler, you br want to bring that to the AEW television. Well, my whole thing is they didn't really know how to present me, and I hadn't really thought about promos over the last couple of years. When I was on Lucha Underground, my character was a giant snake monster who didn't talk, and that was what you'd expect from it. Or maybe I'd have this like deep raspy Batman voice and do some kind of like over the top character. Mm -hmm. And I just told the Bucks, you know, the only time I'm really comfortable doing promos is being myself. I'm, I like to do interviews. I was on a reality show and I could talk forever when I was on that because I wasn't trying to act or be anything I wasn't. So I was like, let me just put on the mask and be myself and see what happens. 
and I think it's kind of something that's getting over with the audience. I think a lot of that has to do with Jungle Boy, too, because he's such a good babyface partner for me to have on my shoulders just kind of pantomiming what I'm saying. Uh, so I kind of just want to be myself wearing the mask and see where that goes and just kind of be creative with it. Cool. One of the most popular kind of acts of the late nineties was X Pac and Kane yeah. when they were together. Is there similarities there? Do you think with you and Jungle Boy of that kind of underdog baby face and the monster? I think that's totally it in a different way. Um, but essentially, the formula is the same. It's you know him and Marco. They're kind of like you know these little babies that need, baby baby faces that need to be protected by the big monster. I come in and clean up after they get beat. It's it's a it's tested kind of thing over time in wrestling that I think really works. Um, because Jungle Boy is just such such a likable character, and he's like you know kids are gonna connect with it, and he makes me he humanizes my character really. I think he gave me the story the backstory without me saying anything, because it just is like a Jungle Book thing that connects. And working with someone like that it reminds me exactly of X Pac and Kane. And I actually watched some of that stuff to see why that works so well. And I think our formula is kind of the same. It's just at a different pace and level because AEW is. Kind of you know crazy crazy stuff out there, which I like to do. So, but it's basically yeah, you're right. It's the kind of the same tried and true kind of Disney book formula that works. Now, when uh, you came into uh, Double or Nothing, you were in the Casino Battle yeah. Royal as a singles competitor, and now you're working with both Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy. Yeah. So you've covered both areas of that. And when AEW heads to TNT, what do you think is the main goal that you are setting your sights on for when AEW hits TNT? Well, they've talked about us, you know, us being a trios, me and Jungle Boy doing tag, Marco and Jungle Boy doing tag, us all doing singles. The sky's the limit, and the opportunities are going to be there. We're going to just see what happens. What's so great about working for them is that they're really keen on listening to audience response and where things are going organically and just going with it. And that's why they kind of let me and Jungle Boy get together in the first place, is that we did a couple spots at Double or Nothing, then filmed a couple promos, and people loved it so much. Like, we're going we're gonna to run with this, because it's organic. And it just it just felt right. So now we're gonna add Marco to the mix, which we're really excited about because we have a lot of ideas to make him kind of the missing ingredient in some of the things we want to do out there in matches. So I think for now the focus is on me and Jungle Boy with our buddy Marco and seeing what happens as TV unfolds. Let's do two more guys. One of the one of the big things right now in wrestling uh, is the topic of you know is wrestling performance art. Should wrestlers be have their own Twitter, have a character Twitter? Where do you kind of see all that? Does it matter? Like where do you sit on it? I think a lot of it is. Seems kind of stupid to me. I feel like most of the people complaining about it are more upset about their positions. They're not where they want to be. Maybe it's like to me, it's not a big deal. Uh, I just got my Twitter and Instagram switched over just to Luchasaurus. I was trying to get rid of like names and stuff and just have something for people. I feel like if you have a brand, go with it. I mean, people. It's 2019. People know that wrestling's performance. There's not, you know, you don't have to go out there and say, I need to show everyone that I am just performing as this character. It almost comes off to me as a little pedantic and kind of narcissistic when you really try to shove that down people's throats. I say just relax about it. Do whatever you want. You know, it's not it's not big deal. It's social media. It's, you know, if you can make a buck off social media, great, I guess. I don't know. Last one, guys. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, Closing, you're bit you're you were big into theater, correct? When you were in the uh, or back into the college days and stuff, was that true? No, I'm no. A, I'm a okay. Historian. Well, you're I'm oh, a historian. Yeah, a historian. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, how's it feel to kind of channel that into your uh, like character and everything like that? Um, well, I like to to do that and bring up anything that I learned as a historian because people don't really know unless you're a history major or go through six years of history in college, you don't really understand what it, it's not about facts and places and dates. It's more about learning how to interpret things and analyze given information, even analyzing an audience or a situation in a match. And it's really helpful for me just to kind of navigate life, navigate how I put together my performances. And then if I can actually bring it into a character, which is now a dinosaur that has a master's degree, which is pretty absurd, but get people to kind of understand that it's absurd and I'm kind of self-deprecating with it, I think it's great. That's like everything I dreamed about um, as a kid trying to do something ridiculous. 